Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to be looking at the multi Minecraft launcher for modded Minecraft or vanilla. But this is a really, really lightweight launcher. It's not like packed full of junk and bloatware like the Curse Forge launcher is, you know, being on Overwolf, etc. Blah, blah, blah. Let's assume you've now downloaded and installed it. Let's go into the app. So this is what it's going to look like. Uh, this is what it looks like here. And then full screen, it's going to look like this. So from uh, left to right on the top, that's how we're going to go through this tutorial. So you can see here, the only one I have installed is Greg Tech New Horizons. If you do want to install that, that's actually going to be next week's video, how to specifically do GTNH and how to get it onto Java 17, 19 and 20. That's going to be next week's video. So please click that subscribe button, guys. It really helps me out. And if you want to join my Discord as well, I actually host a plethora of of um, modded Minecraft servers. We have nearly 2,000 people in our Discord all playing on modded servers. We host like 10 servers at the moment. It's a really amazing community. Um, so anyway, enough waffle, let's get on with it. So you can click here uh, to add an instance, right? So we're gonna click that. And that's gonna bring up this box. You can name your instance. So this is gonna be a new instance just like GTNH new is, okay? So you can name it, you can add it to a group. And like GTNH here, this is a group, okay? So you can add different groups if you want, say, all your 1.12 packs, all your 1.16 packs, if you want stuff like that. That would, or like, you know, all Fabric or Forge. You can have your own categories like that. Now, you can click here to do vanilla and choose any of the vanilla versions here. You can also um, select if you want releases, if you want snapshots shown. shown. So now it's going to show... Uh, the type here as release and then it's got the sh uh, snapshot versions as well old snapshots betas alphas and experimental versions you can also import it from a zip so if you've watched my feed the beast uh, feed the beast launcher tutorial or my cast forge one etc and you know how to export packs this is where you would then go to import it and it gives you an http uh, link or you can do it from a file on your uh, on your computer which you would use to browse here so you can literally install Modrinf packs straight from here, uh, like if we click speed of light FPS booster, and then here it gives you a description about it, uh, which is fr stra uh, straight from Modrinf, I believe, and then what version um, of this pack do you want? Uh, the ATL launcher or AT launcher, again, um, all the packs directly from there, same thing, versions and description. Feed the Beast app import, so this one specifically is actually, because I've got the Feed the Beast app installed on my computer, it's actually, these are the packs I actually have installed on the Feed the Beast launcher, and I can import them straight over onto Multi Minecraft. Feed the Beast Legacy, these are their old packs, like Feed the Beast Ultimate and all those really old, old and goldies. Um, and then the Technic launcher as well. I don't know if this is because I have the Technic launcher installed, which I do. Um, but this has got all the Technic packs here, and again, same thing, version and description. So that's all the ways you can import a new instance. Personally, um, the way I use Multi Minecraft and how I use it for GTNH is I am actually going to use a zip file. I will download the zip file, you can do it from the CurseForge website for example, and then just shove that zip there and it will import the profile. Oh, and lastly, this little icon here is the icon that you can choose. So if you want the icon as an iron or the gear, like I've got one this one up here, you can do it like that. So if we go to folders next, you can see we've got the view instance folder. Now an instance, if you don't know what that means, it's like my Greg Tech install. I've only got one. So this is where you're gonna see your different installations. So I can have Greg Tech and I can have all my other mod packs that I have. I only have that one, so that's all it's showing. And then the central mods folder is, I guess, where you actually store like mods that you want on all of your packs or something like that. I'm not actually sure exactly what that does exactly. Then we have the settings tab, and that's gonna bring up this one here. Now this has got quite a few tabs in it, so we're gonna go through these uh, from top to bottom, left to right. So the launcher tab. Now this is saying, where do you wanna have your folders? So the instances folder that we just looked at, you can change the location of that. You can change the location of where your mods and icons are saved. So you could put in different icons that you can have uh, instead of the default ones. Uh, do you want to check for updates on start? So when you start multi Minecraft, you want to check for updates with the app the user interface now Do you want to reset hidden notifications? Do you want to sort your instances and in your packs by the ones you last launched or by alphabetical order in name? Then you can have your uh, theme. So we've got the default one. You can have uh, dark icons You can see it changes as this hideous icons in my opinion like that i'm gonna leave that as default and then colors this is where you can set dark mode okay 
for the rest of this tutorial, let's continue on dark mode, because I hate light mode, uh, as I'm sure a lot of you probably do. And then we have the console. Do you want to show the console while the game is running? So basically, do you want a running log while you're actually playing Minecraft? Do you want to automatically close it when you quit the game? So as soon as you quit the game, it's going to automatically close that console as well. And do you want to show the console when the game crashes? So if your game crashes, you can then see the log of what's happened up to that crash. And then how many lines do you want it to show in history? Obviously, if you're aware, the console is, you know, it's a hideous amount of lines, um, as it always is. And that's saying how many, you know, how much history do you want to see of, of those lines? Do you want to stop logging? Uh, when the log overflows, I'd say yes on that one. And then there is the font that you can choose um, for the console font itself. I would just leave this as default. And then the the uh, the uh, size of the font as well, the size of the text. Do you want to send anonymous uses usage statistics? Um, you know that's up to you. Next we have the Minecraft tab. So this is the window size. Do you want to start Minecraft maximized? Uh, if not, what size do you want it to be? Uh, native binary workarounds, do you want to use the system installation of GLFW or use the system installation of OpenAL? Aim time, do you want to show the time spent playing instances? Do you want to show the time spent playing across all instances? Record time spent playing instances? And do you want to show the time spent playing in hours only? Now, what that is actually referring to is, if I just scooch myself over there, you can see uh, just down here, it's got total um, total played, and it shows you, you know, when you last played Minecraft, it was for three seconds, apparently. And on the right-hand side over here as well, uh, over here, you can see total play time, two days, etc. So next up, we've got your Java settings. So the overall minimum and maximum memory allocation and perm gen, okay? So these are the default Java memory settings for your RAM that it's going to use on every default pack you install, and it's going to launch them with that. This is where you put your custom Java arguments, and then this is your Java path. So you can see here, I'm using Eclipse Adoptium JDK 17, so Java 17, uh, and then this is where your actual Java is. So it's in you know that file, and it's gonna be in the bin, and it's the Java EXE that you actually want to launch it with. Now, this is the default. So I'm saying by default, I would like to run Java 17 for all of these instances. If you are running 1.12, Minecraft 1.12 and below, you will need to use Java 8. Now, I guess your question would be, well, what if I'm doing both? Leave the default as the one that you use most. If you're using 1.16 and above more, leave it as Java 17. And if you're using 1.12 more, leave it as Java 8. Now, I am going to show you how to individually amend it on each instance, so don't worry about that. And then you can you can test and auto-detect as well on that one. Language, simply which language do you want the app to be in, and it shows the percentage of completeness that it's been translated into. Custom commands. Do you want to do run a custom command before you launch? Wrapper command and post-exit commands. If you don't know what you're doing, I'd just leave this. Proxy, again, if you don't know what you're doing, just leave this. Um, but if you do want to amend proxy settings, that's in here. External tools, there's going to be things like the J Profiler, J Visual uh, VM, Minecraft Edit. So the top two is how you can profile your Java, and it's kind of like an analytical tool to monitor your Java. MC Edit is a Minecraft world editing tool, which is really cool. Um, and then you have the bottom one, which is external editors. Um, accounts, this is where you can choose which Mojang or Microsoft account you are using, and you can switch it between them, and you can set a default, upload and delete skins, etc. And then here is where you would upload your Minecraft logs. So that is it for the entirety of the settings tab. Help, um, report a bug, Discord, Reddit, and about. That's basically where you can go to report a bug on their GitHub. This takes you to their Discord. This takes you to the Minecraft uh, multi-Minecraft subreddit. And of course, this takes you to the About page. Um, you can support it. That's going to take you to their Patreon. And then this brings up a cat. I mean, ugh, fabulous. Um, okay, now we're going to go on to the right-hand side of the app. So over here, again, you we have clicked onto GTNH New. And this is going to tell you about the specific instance you're clicked on. So we can click on this and change the icon. Let's change it to a fox. Um, we can click this, and it's going to change the name of the instance. We can launch it. Um, and you can also launch it with JProfiler. I don't have it, etc. So you can launch it like that if you want to monitor it. We can launch it offline. We can edit the instance. That's going to bring up here. 
Um, basically, all of these tabs that you now see, edit instance, edit notes, edit mods, or view mods, etc. That can all be done from within the edit instance button as well. Just the, the view mods one will take you down to loader mods. So let's go up to version. You can see what version we're using. We can change the version, move one up or down. We can edit that package. We can install Forge, install Light Loader. We can install additional mods. Uh, we can add to the Minecraft jar, replace the Minecraft jar. We can do all of that stuff. We got a load of mods. This is basically saying what mods are we using on this instance. If I were to turn off a specific mod, I could untick this. You can disable them, enable them, or completely remove them. We can also click on this and then go to view configs and it's going to take us not to that specific mods one but it is actually going to take us to the config folder uh, for this instance that's where all the configs are and then uh, the same for the view folder this is the overall uh, mods folder for this instance again this is where these buttons here come in then resource packs which is your texture packs shader packs shaders notes it's notes that you add the worlds, these are your survival worlds. And again, you can use this with Minecraft Edit. Um, you can copy the seed. Honestly, this is this launcher is amazing. What you can do is really fantastic. We can go to servers. I have no servers installed for this one. Screenshots, settings. And again, this is where we're going to be uh, changing the settings specifically just for this instance. So we've got Java. You can click your Java installation. We can browse, and again, it's just for this instance. So if you want to use a specific version of Java for this instance only, this is where you do it. You can browse it and go to the file location. Memory, you can set a specific amount of memory just for this instance, and your Java arguments. Now, I'm going to untick memory because I just want to use it as the default that I've set for the whole app. Game windows, again, it's specifically for this instance. Do you want to you know, set custom settings? Custom commands, again, workarounds, again, and miscellaneous. Um, again, it's all for that one specifically. And then other logs is literally going to show you the debug log for this instance. We can create a shortcut for it as well. So if we click that, uh, you can put your shortcut path. Like if we want to put a shortcut path to our desktop, we can then launch this instance straight from our desktop. You don't have to go into it. Isn't that amazing? I don't really know any other launchers yet that can do that. And I am doing tutorials on all of them so that, you know, you guys can watch my tutorials and use whatever launcher you like. And you can always come back to me for all the information you need. And again, if you do need any help or support, join my Discord because we help troubleshoot for your own server, for your single player worlds, for your own mod packs, all of that. We can help troubleshoot uh, anything you have at all, any problems at all. Just join the Discord. We're uh, very friendly in there and I love helping you guys out. Uh, we can also export the instance to a zip file. So we talked about importing it, but this is also how you export it. And then we can do a copy one. So you might want to change things with an instance and be like, oh, I want to test out some new mods. But basically, you don't want to mess up your original instance and break everything. So you can copy it and it will make a clean, uh, a clean version of it that you can fiddle about with without worrying about breaking anything. Um, down here is more news. And that is actually going to take you to the recent news on the multi minecraft website and then up here you've got your account again see i've got my warwick club one and uh, which is our kind of staff account for my minecraft community and then uh, my personal account and that's it everyone that is the multi minecraft launcher for minecraft this is my absolute favorite one it is a bit more fiddly um, and it's not as like a user friendly, I guess, than things like Curse Forge. However, it is really bare bones. It's a really light uh, launcher and you can do everything with this. You know, you really can. If you want to change really specific things, this is the one where you can do it. So I hope this was really helpful for you guys. Please, again, don't forget to click that subscribe button. Next week's will be a Greg Tech video. And then I'm going to be starting a tutorial series on Batania for everyone. So I'm really looking forward to that. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in next week's video.